Hey, welcome to the Commerce Hero Show. Today, I am joined by Matt Lano and Matt McDougal. We refer to them as the Mats of uh, Rocket Web. How's it going, guys? Doing well. Yeah, Matt great. number one, Matt number two. Yep. So uh, McDougal is is you've had some. You're you're on a whole bunch of pain meds right now, so you'll be hopefully hanging <laughs> in there. But we just want to <laughs> throw that out there. You were a, a, a sport and 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 were able to make it to the to the podcast despite being in severe pain. So we we do appreciate that. Um, <laughs> no problem. And uh, if, I, if I do this a lot, it's uh, I'm not raising my hand. Okay. <laughs> Matt, are you raising your hand again? Do you have something to, something to say? Uh, so we're going to talk today about uh, NetSuite and Magento integrations. Uh, NetSuite being kind of one of your guys' big specializations as an agency. And also you guys um, built the uh, connector for M1, I think also for M2. Um, so maybe you guys can talk a little bit about how you got into working with NetSuite and um, – and, uh, you know, uh, for, we'll go from there and hopefully talk about, you know, maybe best practices, common snags to avoid what your guys extension does, all that kind of thing. Um, so maybe, yeah. maybe we just start off with how you guys got into the space. Yeah. Um, so Matt McDougall, um, uh, the other Matt started rocket web in 2010 uh, January and it was a Magento agency really from the get go, really focusing on just kind of like backend development. So Matt really kind of laser focused in on just doing really high quality Magento work. Um, as we were working in that space, um, it became pretty evident kind of in the early years of Magento that people were looking for a lot more, right, than just having Magento development. They were looking for more services. They were looking for design. And so really around 2012 is when we started to um, explore growing into more of a full agency. So by 2013, we had that full kind of agency. We had all the categories filled, all the, all the boxes checked, um, but we really needed to start getting involved in doing large, large Magento builds, enterprise builds, et cetera. Uh, and one of the first clients we came across, ironically, was came out of IRCE in June of 2013. And uh, at that point, by 2013, we had already been on several several calls with prospects where they were looking to move to Magento, but they already had NetSuite ERP, or they were going to have a NetSuite ERP. And at the time, there were a there was a couple really poor written NetSuite connector extensions. Uh, and then, of course, there was the big guy on the uh, on the block, uh, Saligo, and uh, it was it was unfortunate. But we we one instance still really stands out. Sitting on a call with about five people from a large um, merchant company with Magento on the call as well at the time, and we talked through what we could provide for them. We mentioned using Saligo, and they literally just about bit my head off and hung up on us. <laughs> and the point yes. was, was that they had already gone down that road before and it was never going to be an option in their, in their minds. So it was evident that we had to really provide something and build something for the community. And so in 2013, um, we uh, took on a, a new merchant. They won enterprise, they had NetSuite ERP, it made a great fit. And so we built our Magento One connector at that time. Um, it was, I could talk more about the details on what the product is, um, but we went live in December of 2013. Um, we won an award at Imagine four months later uh, for nice. the most innovative site. Uh, so our first award, or technically our second award at Imagine was around Magento NetSuite and our connector. Um, and that merchant ironically had also come off of Celico as well. And so really in 2014, we started to really start finding merchants that were looking for that solution. In 2015, we opened up our connector, began to sell it to other agencies because we thought it was a really great fit for a lot of businesses. Uh, and so that's really kind of how we, we got into the space. It was actually because it was a great need um, at the moment. Um, and then, you know, later in 2016, 2017, we just saw a lot of larger merchants that we were starting to work with that had NetSuite. And so it just made sense at that time. Um, Rocket Web had only ever done Magento for commerce. Mm -hmm. That was the only platform we built on. Um, and it still is. So we're one of the, you know, we're one of the last guys standing kind of from the very early years 
only focusing in on Magento. I know there's a few others, um, but then in 2016, we actually came alongside with NetSuite and became NetSuite partners. And mm -hmm. so uh, we could do everything, but we focused just on the NetSuite ERP side of things, not on their other commerce offerings. Okay, <laughs> that was that was one uh, uh, question I was going to ask: is is how do um, and we'll jump around. This won't be perfectly chronological, but um, how um, how does uh, NetSuite Commerce sort of stack up to uh, Magento um, for people that are maybe considering them? Yeah, that's a really politically charged question. Right. Being a, a Magento and NetSuite partner. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be very PR here. Um, we deeply believe in Magento commerce. We deeply believe in it because it's extremely flexible, right? It's anything goes. Um, it all comes down to time and money. How much time and how much money do you have to invest to make this platform scale and work? Conform really to your business needs for commerce side. So we love it. We're focused there. Um, we have had merchants come to us that had NetSuite ERP and had Sweet Commerce or Sweet Commerce Advance. Uh, and they, in one case, one recent one in the last six months that went live on M2 Cloud, they were they were just tired of it after six months. It was it was it was limiting for them. Um, we, we respect NetSuite, we respect the company, we know that they have a full suite offering. They're, I think they're playing catch up. Um, we've talked with a lot of NetSuite people, uh, personnel um, and ex-employees, and they all kind of say the same thing, like it's what they have to offer. They have some new kind of new hybrid offerings that they've been beginning to offer, um, but they still, it's, it's just, it's for a different type of merchant, mm -hmm. ultimately. Um, we always say this, if a merchant wants a e-commerce side to work with their back-end business side as, as a perfect fit, data, synchronization, all that stuff tied in directly 100% all the time. And that's what's most important, which is rare, but it sometimes is important. Then I think going with the, the, the NetSuite commerce platforms is the right decision because nothing's right. ever going to get as close as having a true suite that talks right. to one another. Right, right. No, that's a great, that's a great answer. I appreciate it. And it, it's interesting. It makes me think of uh, what's going on with, for example, the Adobe acquisition, which by the way, just became official today. Um, uh, Adobe's acquisition of Magento. Um, when the first announcement came out, they had said that it was, it was in progress and was planning to happen. And, and as of today, the transaction has been finalized. So congratulations to them. Uh, but it makes me think a little bit about, you know, when you have these comp, you know, there's a lot of consolidation happening. So when you have companies that like Adobe that are, that are snatching up different offerings. And so now they have a commerce offering, they've got all sorts of marketing stuff. And then, um, you know, NetSuite has the commerce offering and then a bunch of other offerings and it's kind of there's so much consolidation um it's it's interesting because you know there's this there's this tension between what's sort of the best of breed solution or the most flexible solution and versus sort of staying within an ecosystem of a company that you're that you're bought into right so like for example the adobe acquisition the question is well is that going to sort of favor Adobe over and against, you know, Acquia or um, Acquia's offering um, Drupal, those types of things for for content. Um, so I'm curious how you guys, what, like, what are your thoughts on that in general? Just the consolidation in the space and and how that affects uh, purchasing decisions. Well, it's interesting, Matt McDougall. Do you have any any first thoughts? Um, I, I have some, but. Um. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> it certainly is attractive to be able to go with with one company. Um, but like you pointed out, Matt, it, it really depends on the customer as far as when, when we're talking about uh, what, what nets we can offer for commerce. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I, I, I will say this. Um... And we've had we've had our own clients reach out to us and ask us. At the moment, I'm pretty excited about this, um, and the reason why is that it would have been different if something like um, 
Just for example, Microsoft needed a commerce platform and came through and bought Magento. It doesn't quite fit. It is a business platform, right? It could be used for business solutions, but really when you think about it, Adobe is, is, is literally the 10,000 pound gorilla uh, in this field of digital, digital uh, you know, accuracy and digital commerce and di all these things that are digital roll off of their suite. It makes a lot of sense uh, that this acquisition of Magento took place. And I'm also excited around two more things. The first is, is that Adobe is going to take the strong points that I would say larger merchants in the Magento uh, world need benefits of and really make a, a stronger case to put those together. But number two, Adobe is not the type of company um, like a previous company that owned Magento that started with the letters eBay that just never, <laughs> never did anything with the platform, right? Adobe is not, does not have a reputation of acquiring businesses, letting them settle for three years, do nothing with them, and then move on and, and sell them at a loss. So I deeply believe Adobe is going to invest into this platform is going to invest in the years to come. I think it's going to be really exciting to see what that looks like. Yeah, and not not to go off on too much of a tangent away from uh, NetSuite, but I I remember I was a Cold Fusion developer way back when when it was uh, Macromedia, and yeah. I was there when Adobe bought out Macromedia, and mm. uh, I know there's a lot of developers that uh, are a little upset with what happened to some of the Macromedia products, but. I would, that was really my first introduction to a community of developers and seeing what Adobe did with that community. Uh, and I was impressed. I mean, it was, it was really cool. They did, they did put a lot of, uh, a lot of heart and soul into that, uh, into that development community and did some cool things with cold fusion. That's great. Well, uh, get back on topic here, but we had to delve into that just a little bit today being kind of a kind of a big day um, in Magento's history. But so um, so what are some uh, what are some kind of some best practices for integrating uh, NetSuite and Magento? Yeah, I'll go through some of the basics, and, and these basics are really foundational to any type of agency approach to any platform, so there's there won't be anything quite new here, but <clears throat> we, we deeply believe in a proper discovery phase approach. Um, it, it's got to happen up front. It has to happen thoroughly. You know, NetSuite is, the, the ERP platform is really this, this product that we would say runs all the back-end business. So, you know, everything from financing to warehousing to inventory to fulfillment to project management to payroll, like all these things, it's very modular. Again, it's not open source like Magento, but it is modular. So mm -hmm. getting on a platform at a base cost of, you know, let's say thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 with NetSuite, but your, your business begins to grow, it really can and should be really the last platform you build on. Because mm -hmm. as your business grows from, let's say, $3 million to $300 million, it's modular. And so you're adding on all these additional mm -hmm. uh, options that they have, similar to Magento. Um, but understanding really the, the back-end business needs are different questions to be asked than around asking around the commerce needs. And so within the Magento world, we all have the typical questions like, let's go through your personas. Let's build these personas out. Let's understand who your customers are. Let's look at the analytics. Let's understand mobile, desktop. Let's, all these types of things are different than with NetSuite. So the, 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 the really where professionals come into play in this case is that they, they understand the commerce side. They understand those are types, right types of questions. And then there's a completely different set of case um, questions for the back end business. Um, and they really get kind of black and white and boring like accounting, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but what we ultimately wanna do is we wanna have a system that the back end business that never touches the commerce and the commerce team that never touches the back end business per se, we want those to join up that when, when that launch takes place and everyone's been trained and there's a go live that they meet at the same point, they just have not seen each other for the last you know six to nine months. Mm -hmm. But then the outcome is, is that that business runs efficiently. They run, they run, we've, we've even looked at the numbers. They run with a growth rate without having to hire the same number of staff that the, the growth rate previously required, right? So it requires less staff and more efficiencies and more real-time data and reporting, you know, reporting 
um, is really tough sometimes on the commerce side. Um, but you combine the commerce side with the NetSuite, and now you have a reporting tool that's really, really elegant and fast and customizable. Um, and customizations for reporting, they don't take 20 hours a report, right? They take three. Um, right. So those, those types of benefits. So doing a property discovery phase, understanding the back-end business as well as the commerce side, that is the first major step around any type of integration between Magento and NetSuite. We ran into some trouble in 2015 and 2016, early 2016, where we had taken on businesses that had NetSuite ERP for a long time. And they had recently put Ben on Magento. Mm -hmm. And so we would either step in to put our connector in place after they had been running for some time, or um, another agency was building the Magento site at the same time. And we stepped in to put a connector. And what we found out was, is that the commerce agency did not know anything about the NetSuite side. They didn't know mm -hmm. the business rules. They didn't know how NetSuite worked. They didn't know a lot of the basic things that back-end office people will always know. And what we found was, was that there was a NetSuite platform environment and there was a Magento environment and the two teams never talked and they were built by different agencies, a NetSuite agency and a Magento agency. And then we're asked to come in and put a connector mm -hmm. right in the middle. Between I had come in and just glue this stuff together for us. Yeah. And it was unfortunate. We, we came across some really um, unfortunate circumstances and, and that's just kind of being right upfront and honest. It was tough. And so we've really pulled back away from that model of just selling the connector to anyone. Um, so we really kind of have a precedence right now that we, RocketWeb, since we are, you know, agency partners with both NetSuite and Magento, we really need to have a handle on one of those. So whether we're building the Magento commerce side for them or we're, we're implementing the NetSuite ERP, we need to have a handle on one of those so that we understand the business and we're able to ask the right questions to do our crisscross, right? Mm -hmm. Then put our connector in place, test it, go live. Um, so that's really the model that we've had to turn turn to so that we have control over at least one half of the pie versus none of the pie and having to try to make them talk. Right. That makes sense. You, you mentioned um, some of the um, types of problems that you know the the magento agency might run into not knowing anything about netsuite not knowing anything about the back office um i'd be curious to know what some of those um maybe pitfalls are that people might run into and also maybe just as, as a little bit of context um is there a certain type of client that you you tend to work with um, if I recall, you guys worked with a lot of manufacturers or something like that, but just what sort of types of clients you work with broadly, and then what are kind of some of the pitfalls people might run into? <clears throat> yeah, some I, I would say I could, I guess, speak generally in some ways around some of those pitfalls. Um, one of those pitfalls is that if you're, um, if you're a Magento agency and you're going to work with a merchant that has NetSuite ERP already, and you're going to be dealing with a connector, it is really important to make sure that that client that you're about to work with has a NetSuite guru on staff or the client has a retainer with a NetSuite partner currently. You really need that, you need that wisdom and that help of a NetSuite consultant on the out, that, that knows, knows the business to actually work alongside of you. It is just the percentage of failure is so high to walk into a thing, you know, a scenario where there's Magento and, and, and NetSuite and just go install a connector and think it's going to just happen. Um, there are so many kind of NetSuite nuances, just like there are Magento nuances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't know that well, uh, it's just causing disaster. Matt, do you have anything to add on that? No, I, I was just, I was just agreeing with you. There's a million different ways to do things in Magento and same goes for NetSuite. Yeah, and it, what's really common, believe it uh, or not, is that we come across a lot of NetSuite merchants um, that had their initial implementation a complete failure. And that's because of a couple other different, like other <laughs> brand uh, issues. Um, and so when you, you don't know what you don't know and you step into a scenario where their NetSuite is just messed up and it should have been re-implemented correctly, um, then putting a connector in, even if you're a rock star Magento agency, will absolutely provide no value for the client and they're gonna be upset and they're gonna point the finger at you because in mm -hmm. some cases, the client says, well, we just NetSuite isn't working properly, but they don't know why. And it could really be a poor implementation. They just don't know it. And so you, 
when, when the agency comes through and throws a connector, all of a sudden, guess who the finger is going to point at? It's going to point mm -hmm. at the agency like, oh, you failed us. Uh, and it's just, it's certainly not the case. You need an expert person, a consultant involved in something like this to actually call referee, you know, in some of those cases and say, hey, we do need to shore up something around fulfillment on NetSuite before we even talk about syncing product orders from Magento in a test environment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I would say, honestly, Caitlin, that's that's the largest piece of advice. There are other small pitfalls, proper planning, scheduling. You know, the one thing that always throws people off is that, and we learned this in uh, 2015, 2014, 2015, we took on a really large merchant at the time they were doing, um, they were doing about five or six million dollars. Believe it or not, they had started on Magento Go. Uh, okay. If you remember Magento <laughs> Go, I think uh, they must have been like one of the four merchants that successfully was running on Magento Go. Yeah. And um, and they got off of Magento Go, obviously, in like six months because it was not working for them. And they went to proprietary system and the proprietary system took the revenue share, right? And it was that type of model. Yeah. And so in January, February of 2014, they called us up out of the blue. It was a big brand. And uh, at the time, they were doing about $5 million And... Uh, what was interesting as, as we got into that project early on, um, what was really evident was that, and they were using QuickBooks, right? Back mm. then, they were using this, they were using that. And and what, what we learned in that process was that um, at that moment, we were not NetSuite um, partners. And so we brought in a NetSuite partner um, out of the Northwest, uh, big, big name, really, really respected in the NetSuite world, um, they came in. And what we realized in a project like that was, was you just don't compound the issue when you have a Magento agency and the client and then a NetSuite vendor. You, you quadruple the efforts. Mm -hmm. And so calls would have 18 people on them. <laughs> and it just seemed like every four hours of the business day, we were having calls to plan what we all needed to do. And so there was never time to get anything done because it was nothing but coronation. And mm -hmm. so what we realized was in a project like that, would you, we would all day assume this should take six to nine months, depending on the scale of the NetSuite and the Magento. This took 15 months. Well, that's unacceptable to clients. Clients don't want to spend 15 months and they don't certainly have staff to sit around on calls all day and try to make everyone play well together and coordinate calls and do this and screen share and demo and train. Like We don't mm -hmm. have time for that. And it became evident that um, one of those pitfalls, and we learned our own lesson, was plan for the worst for schedule. It's going to happen. It just is. And that's what every agency should consider is even if you're working with a SaaS connector product, whatever is told, just assume it's 3x. It's going mm -hmm. to be longer. It's going to be a harder struggle. And that was one of our reasons of modeling in 2016 is becoming a NetSuite and Magento solutions provider for both. Um, we have one throat to choke here, and that's the account mm -hmm. manager, right? And mm -hmm. he has a Magento tech lead under him, and he has a NetSuite lead under him. And now you have one account manager, one agency that you set up calls with and do status reviews. And and now, now the 15 months has gone down to nine months or eight months. So we've saved everyone time, saved everyone money, and it's because we've, we've really cut out um, having to bring in so many types of providers to work in conjunction. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. The, and then, uh -huh. sorry. I was going to answer the second half of your question, but go ahead. Oh, no, 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 please. So the types of clients we, we, we like to work with, um, we, we really have started to get into the B2B space. Um, it, obviously, it's a growing market for everybody. It's something that we're excited about because ultimately, NetSuite makes a lot of sense for B2B companies. Um, they're so complicated sometimes in the back end. So having that versus having a mom pop uh, type shop running out of their basement on Magento. Uh, and that's all they're fine with, with QuickBooks. Um, B2B does require more complexity, more synchronization, more options. Um, and so that's a great type of merchant for us. And then the second that we've just learned to love and work with well are, are either family owned businesses, right? Two generations, three generations. Those, those have been great because they value partnerships and relationships. They're they're ingrained in their in their business practices in their culture. Well, that's 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 what we love. That's what that's who we are. That's how we how we want to work. And then thirdly, really direct to consumer. Um, direct to consumer is is so powerful because what it allows it allows the 
the, the, man, the, the, the brand to speak and sell directly to their customers the way that they want to versus having to go through and feather their, their products out across a thousand other commerce stores. Direct to consumer is great. There's a story. It's, it's, how you want, it's how the brand always intended for the brand to be sold and marketed versus having a thousand other companies throwing you know hot red sales all over their banners to sell their products. They really want to do something. So direct to consumer has really been um, really helpful for us as well. Nice. Nice. Um, and then in terms of the exam, like you said, you talked about, you know, having ba a bad net suite implementation. I don't know if it, it would be possible to go a little more granular um, into, and I know it, it might be, you know, like asking what are examples of bad Magento impl implementations. You could, you could attack that question from a lot of different angles. So it might be overly broad, but I'd, I'd love to go a little bit more granular if possible and, and get into some of the types of examples of issues with NetSuite implementations. Yeah, Matt McDougall, think of, think of maybe a couple options that are, or examples as well. Um, I could give, without getting too specific, I could at least give a couple highlights. One of them is really having an understanding around <clears throat> the intentions and expectations of a go live and what is supposed to sync. So um, a lot of people sometimes think, well, a connector is supposed to make everything in NetSuite work just like it's supposed to in Magento. Um, and so that's where we learned that doing a, 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 a proper discovery phase removes all these what ifs. So we always say this, we, we want expectations to be met. That's what any business would say. Um, our number one you know, mantra would be, we hate surprises just as much as you hate surprises. Mm -hmm. So what we wanna make sure that we understand is when we're going in and let's say looking at attributes of products and we're looking at simple and configurable and virtual and bundled and well, bundled, the way Magento works with bundled and NetSuite um, and their different ways that they, their, their, uh, their logic, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. So we just can't say, let's just assume we're using the same language. We actually need to know how to define the language in Magento and then understand the, the difference in NetSuite and say, all right, we're saying the same language, but we mean two different things and our expectations are going to be different. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so that's that I would say that's one I would, I would go then around even like payment gateways and that payment gateways are always a little bit, what's the order? What's the logic? Um, there's benefits on both sides to either auth and capture in Magento or, or do it all in NetSuite or auth in Magento and capture in NetSuite on fulfillment. You got all these options. Well, that's not a that's not a, a, a 90 second conversation. That's a that could be a 90 minute call just around that order because typically a lot of businesses are coming to us with, with NetSuite. So they have a they have a mantra in their business on how NetSuite logic works. That's all they've ever used. <laughs> They don't realize that their customizations to NetSuite are not intended how NetSuite and normal businesses would work. And it mm -hmm. certainly doesn't match up with Magento. So we always enter into a discovery phase and ask this question. As we go through this, would you strongly consider changing your business rules and logic and flows and operations in order to meet default NetSuite and meet default Magento? Unless it's it's a use case that is is critical to the life of your business, would you please consider that? And it'd be foolish for any merchant to say, no, 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 we want to do everything we want to do. But we have come across merchants that are like, no, that's what we want to do. Like, all right, that's that's not normal in commerce and, and NetSuite. So it's mm -hmm. going to cost time and money to now change them both and make them work together. So those are the types of pitfalls is be open to flexibility around how standard businesses work. If NetSuite has 40,000 plus clients on NetSuite ERP, and this is how NetSuite makes it to operate, then don't go try to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. your, your business is not so unique that you're the only person in the entire world on NetSuite that must run this way. So it's just mm -hmm. having, having more common sense keeps costs down, keeps schedule down, keeps training down, keeps maintenance down. Like these are all the positives that any back end business, those are the important things to a business. So speak to what is important to them. It's always cost, right? It's always going to be cost on the business side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that makes sense. Kind of getting them out yeah. of workflows that they might have in place that are just sort of have been grandfathered in, yep. but getting them onto more uh, standard 
practices and workflows and stuff like that. Exactly. McDougal, did you have anything? Yeah, I think uh, we've seen some some implementations that um, that were done by a NetSuite partner who's who's really a, an accounting firm, and there are there are a bunch of accounting firms that have gotten into NetSuite, mm. and they they will set up NetSuite so that all the numbers are perfect and all the reports are good, but they're not thinking. They don't have that mindset of e-commerce and doing a proper product taxonomy, you mm. know, getting getting all your attributes right, and you know, thinking about how this is going to actually work in the real world for e-commerce, thinking about SEO and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the other hand, we've seen some NetSuite consultants that are just tech guys, and they have no idea what a general ledger is. <laughs> and <laughs> And the numbers are just screwed. I mean, the you can use, and at that point, you can use NetSuite to track inventory, but you can't really use it to to do your taxes at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so, right. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, uh, you talked about like the kind of the cl classic example of pay with payment uh, gateways. Are you auth capturing on the Magento side or on the NetSuite side? Um, I was curious if you had any uh, examples of where it made sense to do one or the other um, for you know, a, a certain you know type of a business. Yeah, uh, Matt McDougall, I, I know we've done it and we've done it every possible way. I know that we prefer Auth and Capture and Magento, push the order through, completed right onto NetSuite. Um, yep. You know, that's that's what we prefer. It's it works great. It's default. Uh, we do have some clients that they want Auth and Magento and Capture in NetSuite um, based upon fulfillments or some of their business rules. Uh, we would always say try to stick with the simplest solution versus going complex. Really have a strong use case to actually Auth and Magento and Capture in NetSuite. It just becomes cumbersome if you know. And we do have even a couple of clients where they're using simultaneously in the customer support. Um, division, two screens, right? They have a Magento admin screen and they have a NetSuite screen open up simultaneously. And that's how they're doing, you know, chargebacks and, and credits and, and returns. And it's like run, trying to run two systems. Well, it's just more complicated. Um, if we could follow, you know, this the simplest point from A to B, it's going to be better for everybody. And, and you know, why give some re good reasons why you can't go with that that flow and, and so sometimes yeah. they have really good reasons yeah go Matt. And, and if you do do if you do stick with auth capture then uh you can use any payment gateway in magento yeah. mm. so that really you've got tons of options if you if you need to auth in magento and then pass that token into netsuite and do the capturing in netsuite i think i think our solution is cyber source Mm -hmm. And I think that might be the only one. May, maybe PayPal, PayFlow Pro is available as well, but but you're really limited in in your payment uh, payment gateway options. Right. Mm -hmm. And is that when they would want that kind of a flow? Is that just because uh, they want they don't want to capture it until they know that they fulfilled the order? Yeah. Some sometimes fulfillment might take a couple weeks or more and they want it you know they want to make sure not to charge that that customer up front i've heard i don't know all the specific laws from state to state but i've heard mm -hmm. that there are some states that uh require that you capture on ship on mm -hmm. shipment um and you know if you're if you're fulfilling within a couple of days you you can you know you can get around that and just off and capture uh, when the customer purchases, but right, um, right, yeah. Um, and then in terms of you talked about um, uh, Matt Leno about um, chargebacks and and returns, um, and uh, you know people maybe having a suboptimal setup where they're doing things in both systems at the same time. If they if they have things set up properly and they have your guys' extension in, extension in there, are they just handling returns in one place, like in Netsuite, and then they're not having to do them in Magento at the same time manually? Yeah, um, I think I think our preference right now is to do everything in. So anything in the commerce side, we want to we want to use the platform that's best built for it, right? So we would say Magento. That would be okay. our first our first yeah. option. So we've 
anything that deals with commerce, commerce channels like that, leave it in the Magento world, that's what it does best. Don't make Magento, by the way, try to do ERP functionality, right? And a lot of a lot of hungry businesses have tried to take on clients that would say yes to anything and, and try to do uh, provide uh, Magento to do things that it's not meant to do. And then let NetSuite do what it does best. It does all those backend business operations and, and finances and inventory, let it, let it live there. And that's where our connector is, is not really, and to speak a little bit on the details of it, it's not a fixed extension connector. It's not something that's so rigid. It's the, the benefits of the product really is that it, it is a framework. It does the very basics of what everyone else needs to, the, the, the connector to do, right? We need to sync customers, orders, inventory. We need those basic things to go back and forth, but, but there's more flexibility to it. There's more things that, and, and you know this, in the Magento world, everyone knows there's going to be a checkout button, but what's going to happen when you click that button? <laughs> right. So the same thing when it comes with a connector, everyone wants to sync customers. But right now in the B2B world, now we have customer groups and we have different divisions. And, and, and can they sign in over here? I wonder if they call in on the NetSuite side for customer service. Do those businesses now get synced and the customers rolled up under them? So there's just more complications, too. And that's where the framework that we've built, this extension framework, is flexible. So, yeah, if your use case is, is more long tail than what m- most businesses are, the answer is yes, we could do it. And then the great benefit of this connector is that it's your code. So we're big proponents of Magento and open source and ownership and all these things, but the connector is built in the same way. It's it's open source, it's flexible, it's ownership. It sits on your Magento server. Um, and one of the problems that we, we know of is that in the world where you have a SaaS solution that's providing the synchronization between NetSuite and Magento, or I would say, you know, Magento and any other platform is that you ultimately you're adding an extra element of failure. So when the SaaS server goes down, your connection at the moment is lost. Mm-hmm. Um, you could be still be in place in orders and nets. We could still be up, but you don't know what's going on um, because they're not reconciled. Uh, and the way that our connector works, it sits on your Magento server. Mm-hmm. So there's not an extra entry point of failure somewhere. Um, if NetSuite goes down for, which by the way, 99.9% uptime, I get it. But if NetSuite goes down for three minutes um, and your Nets and your Magento store is still live, you're still placing orders. No yeah. one's got any failure points. And so as NetSuite's back on, it does that sync and you're back and running. Now, if your Magento site goes down, right, you don't have a need for a connector. And so we've just kind of made that logic extremely simple and put it on the Magento server. Right, right. Um, that's really cool. I, um, you mentioned like a customer support, uh, workflow where customer, somebody calls in for support, maybe the support center, maybe the support center is interfacing primarily with, with NetSuite. Um, what type of, and I'm sure that can also vary a lot from one company to the next, but maybe you take one example for of the type of, you know, one of the three types of businesses that you tend to work with, what kind of customer support workflows do you generally encourage uh, for them to be able to get in and, and, you know, deal with NetSuite? Maybe are they trying to do everything through NetSuite? Or are they having to go into Magento for other things? Well, one of the benefits that NetSuite offers is it really offers a f- a really powerful and really popular, um, um, and my mind just went blank. Um, like something related to customer support? Yes, like a, uh, I want to say CMS, but it's not CMS. Like call center management? Well, OMS. well OMS? It's, no, it's, the, it's, the, it's where you're, you're reconciling all your customers, all the transactions of communications. Oh, okay. CRM. CRM, CRM, I'm sorry. CRM. Yeah. CRM. CRM. <laughs> I'm on drugs too. Uh, <laughs> CRM. Uh, Somebody get me some drugs. <laughs> so uh, NetSuite has a great CRM platform. I mean, there's there there are people that that only use the CRM. They don't use any other other modules of NetSuite. It's just nice. really popular. Um, that's that's something that should live in NetSuite. Well, if that's if you're going if your business is going to hold on and capture CRM that strongly which if your business requires it, use it, it's there, right? If your business is gonna require it, you are going to have to have your staff also trained on Magento. Is they're going to have to interface with Magento admin, right? 
So mm -hmm. that's a great example where the CRM is powerful. Use it as your business. If your entire customer support team is built around that, you're going you you will you will have to use both platforms um, mm -hmm. and be trained in it. And and that's one of the benefits. And um, is is the training is so an agency like ours, when we're speaking and training staff, if we were not NetSuite, right? We knew how to spell NetSuite, and that was the end of it. <laughs> all we're all we're going to be able to do is train people on Magento and the tools that Magento offers, or vice versa with NetSuite. And here's this is one of the other benefits around having a single agency model uh, around both platforms is that we have we have the right person in both Magento and the NetSuite that's able to speak to the context of the other in relationship to what their their focus is on. So the NetSuite focused lead person also understands Magento and how their connections are all set up. And the Magento tech lead knows their NetSuite side. So when training comes into play, you're getting a, what simplest term is a more holistic training approach. Um, right. I was talking with a Magento customer success team uh, a few weeks back and I asked the question, I said, what is the number one problem out of all the Magento clients that you work with? Um, what's their number one complaint? I mean, this is what you deal with is customer success. Their number one complaint was this, is that the merchants are given a powerful tool like Magento without any clear understanding and full training of the product and how it works. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're the Magento community. We're the agencies. Who, who else is there past us? And, and I know there's mates training. There's those great guys out there doing that. But like that's, that's a failure on the, on the community's side is just to close a contract, build the site, and go live. And, and the estimation is QA and go live, and we're done. Um, well, no, there's, there's, there's a larger picture. We've, what we've done is we've taken away the old rusty toolbox with a hammer and a screwdriver. We took it away from them and we gave them a snap on top of the line toolbox with, you know, fire engine red paint on it and every tool drawer with every possible tool. And we're like, all right, here's the, here's the tool chest. Well, no, yeah. no, like our, our ability still has to be to, to know how to open the drawers, hand them the tool and say, this is what this tool is. Here's how you use this tool. In your context and in your back-end business, this tool would be a very effective. That's, totally. that's, that's, that's the complete job. And we've, we, in our own world, have failed on that in, in Rockweb's world. Right. right. Yeah. Tons of uh, tons of questions popping up for me and of, of things around just digital transformation in general and client onboarding and things like that, um, that we'll get to. Um, one of the things I used to work in house as a developer for a, um, a merchant as a direct to consumer uh, supplements company. And so at one point we were looking at, because we had some pain points around tracking inventory, reporting, um, and we were looking at options out there for, we, we looked at NetSuite a little bit. I think we were probably a little bit, uh, we couldn't afford NetSuite at the time. It was maybe a little bit above our, our price range. Um, but one thing I'm curious is like for a company, and let's just, let's just say to narrow it a little bit, a direct to consumer brand that's on Magento, that's growing and has never used NetSuite before, and they're starting to look at ERP options out there. They're looking at NetSuite. They've never used it before. They want to um, implement it. What are some things that they, that uh, some, some, be, you know, some best practices for them to look at, maybe some snags they might not consider, or some ways that to, to leverage NetSuite that they might not be considering? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot to that question, but good question. <laughs> um, I would first say, and I, we could circle back to this um, this point uh, if I remember. I would I would certainly say NetSuite is more affordable in licensing and implementation than most people think. And I'll leave that, and we'll table that for a moment. I'll make a note. We'll get back to that one. <laughs> good. I have a very like short attention span to questions so oh yeah the, I, I have a whole system for writing notes down so i so i don't forget. my problem is i can't even write and talk so i've got I like know. focus I know. So. <laughs> um, so what was the second part of that question <laughs> oh so basically for a direct to consumer brand that's on magento looking at moving to netsuite what yeah. what should they be looking to do what should they be looking to leverage yeah well what's interesting is that there is a part of the netsuite world i mean actually the company um, that they are, they've always sold and focused on really to the CFO. Mm, right, well, right, the right. CFO the side of things. Yeah. Like, so mm -hmm. the CFO looks at NetSuite like, oh, we love it. 
or they look at another ERP that's got really simple, intuitive interface around a counter, like, oh, we love it, we're gonna get that. And that's where the decision lies. Well, that's, that's not helpful because it's not helpful to the rest of the business because the business is not run by itself uh, off of the CFO. Um, then there's the other side where the, you have the CMO um, with NetSuite. Well, that's also difficult because they their mind is not on the, the county and the business side. They're all <laughs> focused about outward outward speaking to the public and yeah. to their customers. They can care less if things reconcile. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so it is it is very difficult. So we we've 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 dealt with them all. I mean, in just the last several years working with NetSuite and Magento, um, so we have sold, sold and spoken to CFOs. Uh, CMOs, CEOs, um, you know, literally the Magento admin person. Uh, that's that's the only person at the business around the commerce side. Right. Um, so it is really important. And we our typical qualifications and before we even talk about a discovery phase is really to go through. Tell us about your business um, briefly. We'll have a 30 minute call. It's, we, we, we're not big fans of having gigantic calls just to waste people's time. Go through some questions, get some understanding of them, but then we want to send them a questionnaire. And we send them about a five-page questionnaire. We give them a week or two to fill it out. When that questionnaire comes back to us, we'll review it um, and we'll make some recommendations. I mean, we we've we've done this even around Magento, right? We want to make sure that what you're about to go on makes a lot of sense for your business. If this is way too big for you, we're going to tell you because again, we're about long-term partnerships. I'm going to. I burn that number one pillar in our business. If I put you on something, you go live and you hate it, and then you never want to see us again. It's a really mm -hmm. poor business model. Um, so making sure that the, and we want all the players. And so what we try to do is when the CEO sees a NetSuite demo or we talk and he's like, yes, this is what I want. I put the brakes on, which is probably the opposite thing of head of sales to do. But the first mm -hmm. thing I do is put, here's the brakes. Let's put the brakes on for a moment. We want to have another call. Now we want your CFO, mm. your VP, and we want your CMO. We want them all on the call, and we're going to demo NetSuite to actually speak to their languages. Because I want to make sure before we get into this thing that someone doesn't sign a contract for a NetSuite license and with RocketWeb, and we get started, and then all of a sudden, half the half the executive team doesn't know what they just signed up for. Well, NetSuite mm -hmm. is not like one of your 30 backend business apps. It is the app that's going to run everything. So mm -hmm. you better have, we want full team partnership on for this. Because when we get to the discovery phase, now we're going to have interviews with the CFO and the CMO and the e-com director and all these people. We want buy-in. We want them to be part of the team. We want them to love what we're about to do with them and for them and for their benefit. So that is one of those big things of when you're trying to select a platform, select it in mind that the whole executive team is on board. And then number two, the th second thing is, is just because you picked your ERP and you picked your commerce Magento platform, you are still not complete in picking vendors. If you're a business that's growing, you have other partners. So now the question is, who's my ESP going to be? Well, in NetSuite's case, Bronto is part of their package now, right? That's their marketing. Mm -hmm. And we love right. Bronto. Right. So that makes sense. But maybe they have another ESP. And it's a really clumsy extension for Magento, and it's not going to integrate with NetSuite. So let's not sign contracts. Let's not start architecting something that's not going to work, and we're going to tell you in four months when it's too late. So that's the other thing is don't stop with the ERP and the Magento Commerce side. What's the next thing? Well, we have ESP. Uh, are we going to have Smile.io's reward program now? Well, that's going to tie into Magento. But we also want the data to go to NetSuite. Now we're also going to have this, and we're going to have this. We want to understand is Magento or NetSuite going to control that new vendor, that new product app that's attached to it? And does the data need to be synced? We want to go through that entire highway plan before contracts are being signed and we're building stuff that's in four to six months, we have to tell you like, oh, by the way, this is not going to work. You have to go pick a different ESP. Well, I just signed a two-year contract to get a great deal. It's, right. We tell me it's not going to work. Like, so that's the biggest, understand that your entire team is on board with the right product. And then number two, follow that through. Keep going and keep going until you guys have no other great ideas about adding for the future. And then make sure it all is going to work properly. Right. That's, that's, um, 
That's really cool. And you, you can always tell, you know, when you're work, deal, working with a salesperson and they hit the brakes on something or they say no or they not no, but they prompt you to reconsider. Uh, that's always a good sign versus like, hey, where can I, where can we sign? Let's get this thing done. And um, it's interesting that uh, you talked about the different roles, the CFO, the CEO. And it made me think about when uh, when I was uh, the scenario I was talking about when we were considering NetSuite as a company. And I was kind of in the lead developer, maybe call it CTO type role. And I remember uh, the other person in the company was kind of like a COO over operations. And we, we did both have different perspectives on the things that we were interested in and, and not interested in. So it's, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, and I think that's, that's such a great perspective is like, Hey, uh, let's make sure we get everybody on board and very, uh, kind of systematically and methodically. Um, what are those, some of the things that people could be excited about? Like, let's say that moment with the CEO who's like, Oh my gosh, this is great. There's so much this is going to do to help us to grow. What are some of those things that for a director consumer brand on Magento growing, what are some of the things that the CEO is going to be excited about? Uh, yeah. in terms of functionality, in terms of the things that are going to help them to grow. Yeah, it's really interesting. I, I would say there's two. And I'm going to say them out loud so that you guys can remind me. Um, the first one is staff. And then really number two, it's data. Um, what we have seen, and it's really risky, when a business has got 15, 20 employees and they're growing really fast, they it is a big risk is for them to scale and grow at the rate that, they're, that they want to grow at. They actually have to pre-hire. So a lot of CFOs are going to pre-hire and they're going to say, all right, in nine months or 12 months, I'm projecting we're going to need five people. Well, five people is a big deal when you're growing, when you only have 20 people and you're going to add five more. It's a, mm -hmm. So it's a calculated risk. Um, there's always risk in doing that. Um, the benefit that NetSuite is going to give a business like that is it gives them, and it's, it's going to lead to number two, which is the data. It's going to give them a platform that allows simplicity, meaning they don't need to deal with four to five or six systems. Now they don't need to maintain five different items in the background for products. Um, they also don't need to hold multiple licenses if required. They also don't need to do five times training. And that simplicity of that type of platform exponentially is going to allow them to use NetSuite properly, trained with 20 people that potentially they don't need to hire five they may be totally fine because of the software that they have now to only hire one or two. Mm. That's a huge benefit. That removes the risk because your biggest risk is not personnel. Your biggest risk now is just a product. Well, if you have mm -hmm. a great, great partner and you're well-trained, that risk has been mitigated deeply. Number two then is kind of that data. And so that is where, I mean, we just, oh, man, even some of our existing clients are in this boat. They have QuickBooks. They have this back end, then they have payroll, and they have this over here. Then they have Magento over here, which is an isolated silo, um, which has its own reporting. Well, the problem is, is that by the time you as a CEO need to get all the data together to see the big picture and make decisions for the next 12 months, by the time you get it from Magento and you get shoppers and, and orders and you know, all, all your different KPIs, then you go through your back end business and you look at all your expenses. You have this mammoth amount of data that someone, and you're putting all their trust in them, has got to reconcile, mm -hmm. slim down and give you a piece of paper or a you know, pack of paper that's all laid out with all the data. Well, guess what? That took six weeks to get that. Price. It didn't happen <laughs> in six hours. Yeah. Well, the benefit on the NetSuite side is that that is what NetSuite does. So it takes all your data from Magento on the Commerce side. It takes your data from Amazon or eBay. It takes your data from the back end business and expenses and payroll and inventory and what you still have on stock. It takes all that data. And depending on what you want, your, your dashboard of your KPIs for the CEO looks in real time, real time really helpful. And then the reporting that you could dive into gives you all the data. So you're not waiting six weeks to get the data and make a decision. You're making a decision based upon the data that you have right now. And now you're like, all right, I, I do need to order 10,000 more of this expensive product because based upon this, this, and this that I just read in the last three minutes, it tells me I need to order more versus waiting six weeks and being out of yeah. stock or waiting six weeks, placing the order, but not realizing that the in those six weeks, Everything declined, and now you're going to have this overstock of 9,999 products sitting on the shelves.
Yeah. So that's that's the benefit for a CEO. It's really the personnel risk lowers, improves environment, and number two, it's really the real time data. That's interesting. Um, and it's funny because I remember uh, when I was at the company, we were looking at it, we were having all those issues. We were trying to project sales and inventory and having trouble projecting them. It's actually interesting because um, I was more of the mindset of wanting to find uh, a single tool. Like I wanted to find a single tool that did inventory projections. And, um, you know, with a little bit of sophistication in there and stuff like that. And I remember being sort of shocked that it was so hard to find like a slick little SaaS app that just did that for you. Um, and I think NetSuite was one of the only options. Uh, and at the time we weren't really, that was really one of the main pain points we had. I'm sure there were others that we weren't really considering the full breadth of what we could have used, but at least in my limited mindset as a developer, that was kind of the, 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 tack I was taking. And it's interesting that um, NetSuite was like one of the only options that had an, uh, kind of a non-trivial uh, inventory projection type feature. Yeah. I mean, NetSuite, I mean, obviously, you know, it was acquired by Oracle <clears throat> uh, about a year ago. Um, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's a product that when you look at the numbers of the customers and who they are, and you know how we always see kind of the Magento um, rating against other platforms. The, you have to combine almost the last three, you know, second, third, and fourth place in the in, in the ERP world to even get to close numbers of where NetSuite is. I mean, there's not even a clear second. It's they're so far behind. Uh, wow. And NetSuite has been, and I see Magento doing the same thing. NetSuite really got to the point, and they really got to it several years back, and. And I think there's some critique for it, but the innovation really kind of slowed down in some ways. I mean, no, no company wants to say innovation slowed down, but it really did. And so they began to look for the best of the best of different modules and acquire them and bring mm -hmm. them into their suite and right. make them all work right. with NetSuite. Well, that yeah. sounds really familiar in the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah. um, and so that's not, it's not a knock on them. Everyone has gone through that. Google and Microsoft, any large company does that. Um, but there's also the benefit to it. The benefit is, is that they really are handpicking things that they know that their customers are asking for that sometimes you and I don't know all the customers are asking for. So when a product is added to a suite like this, we're like, hmm, it's interesting. That company is seeing the writing on the wall or that's what people are wanting for. I need to, I need to know that module. I need to know that product now because that's what the, that's what the environment's calling for. Mm -hmm. Um. And then uh, we wanted to get back to the the question of uh, pri pricing. You were saying that it really is uh, a lot more affordable than most people think. Um, so how how you know as far as pricing goes, I don't know how specific you can get, but um, uh, what what does that you know look like, and in what ways is it more affordable than than some people might think? Yeah, <clears throat> so I, I certainly can't get into specifics on pricing, <clears throat> being a partner, but I, I I can give you some some general um, thoughts about it. So the first thing is, is that I would say in about 75% of the merchants that we've talked with, they have been surprised on how affordable it is. Mm -hmm. um, and really, you know, you think about world-class NetSuite ERP, like this, just this behemoth that's been around for, for so long and it's innovating and number one in the ERP space. And you think, well, it's got to come with a price tag. And the answer is, well, it does, but it really depends on your size. So it's not it's not built upon one flat or or a single and, and you know medium and large size. It really is based upon users, right? So they they do their pricing by kind of the flat project. Um, I'm hearing music and I want to sing to it, but I'm not sure yeah, whose I'm music. Gonna, is. I'm going to tell my uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell my <laughs> wife to quiet down a little bit. That's okay. Um, I want to start humming. So um, it is it is based upon user seats. Um, with those user seats, you have the flat NetSuite product. You could get the kind of the medium or kind of the larger version of that. So you buy the number of seats per month. And then it's like, well, how do we do inventory? Well, I, your, the advanced inventory module is going to be required for the way you want to do it. Oh, you are in UK and Brazil and the US for commerce. Um, you're going to need the one world module right? Because we're going to have multiple countries, multiple sites, multiple uh, um, currency. So we need the one world module. And that's really what our discovery phase is. We want to make sure we understand any tacked on modules that you're going to need with NetSuite before um, we start building the project. And so 
the affordability, I would say in a business that is doing 10 million or less with let's say eight to 12 employees, um, typically for those types of setups, we have seen, I'll give you ranges of cost of license and then implementation. I'll give you ranges because it's not too specific, but it gives you a general idea. We've seen, we've seen those types of licenses landing between about $23,000 to about $35,000, $40,000 a year for license, which for those types of revenue on, on commerce is going to be in some, in some cases, pretty typical to Magento too. Um, mm -hmm. And then on implementation, it is not exorbitant. Um, we have done um, multiple versions uh, uh, implementations now, and in those cases, though, some of those merchants reached out to the NetSuite PS division to get a cost, just to kind of compare. Uh, we've What's been the PS division. So their professional services division, oh. NetSuite is you know unique in the sense that there is one side of NetSuite that sells licenses, and they use the agency model to go and get their revenue, and then there's another half that competes which uh, is yeah. the NetSuite sales direct with professional services. Right. Um, so we've typically been 40 to 50% less than their services. Um, and of course we have a long-term then client relationship with them. So we're not, we're not running afterwards, but those types of services on implementations, we've been doing those on the same size, 10 million or less, eight to 12 employees. Those have been landing between maybe 55,000 to about 85,000 for implementation cost. Mm -hmm. And when you compare that, which one is most important? Is it your backend business or is it your commerce? Well, that's a really hard decision to make depending on who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. Because you have, you have to take them both. Well, when you look at Magento 2, what are those implementations costs, right? It's yeah. typically going to be more. And yeah, so NetSuite, NetSuite's like, oh, well, that's half my business. That keeps me from hiring five or 10 new people in the next year. That's, that's, that's a no brainer. It's easy money. There's a guaranteed. There's no guarantee with commerce. Commerce is, you know, all about marketing and sales and all these types of um, ways to generate um, revenue. So that would be one example. I would say if you're doing 10 to 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars online, I would say typically, obviously, the license is going to grow. But again, implementation does not quadruple. So implementation on something that someone's that's doing 50 million implementation costs may only be 200,000. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't compound like the size of the business does, but it it certainly is going to have a long term factor of saving costs and saving personnel. Got it. Got and it. A couple more things on price. I know that uh, Netsuite expects, on average, that a customer is going to stay with them and use Netsuite for ten years. Yep. That's the mm -hmm. average. Wow. Um, and then I also know from from us, uh, so we we sell uh, we sell a product feed extension, and I know that our support costs. I mean, there's you have to build in some support up front, but then over time that support cost just really really drops. So I would think that Netsuite can consider those two things when it comes to price and uh, negotiate when they need to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They have really good negotiation um, abilities there at NetSuite. And I would say when you're talking with a business that's doing 10 to 20 million online and a minimum, they are going to have five to six backend, five to six backend systems. They're running all the different categories of their backend business. Well, when mm -hmm. you take, and we've done this exercise, not only kind of in a classroom under the kind of the NetSuite umbrella, but we've even done this in kind of the real world. When you begin to look at the staff required or the agencies to help um, maintain those on a monthly basis. You look at the annual cost or license cost. You look at the, the efforts of data, waiting on data and getting everything synchronized. And then you look at implementations. Remember, when you have six backend systems and you need three of them to implement, most of them have never been designed to implement with one another. And so mm -hmm. you're talking about a lot of time and risk to wait nine months sometimes to have all those things done. When you begin to look at those, all of a sudden you're looking at like a, a $28 or $35,000 a year license with Nets where you're like, well, I'm already paying $22,000 just on, on maintenance and license for these systems. That doesn't even account for all the different types of trainings I need. As I have staff roll off and new staff come on board, they need to be trained on five or six systems now. Um, it's just, it becomes to grow uh, much larger than that number. And so that's where we've right. just had people like shock, like, oh, that's, that's it for the license and implementations 
not bad. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not what I was expecting. And so those are the positive things around NetSuite. Like look for, look for those items. When you're looking, you know, in the technology world, we always think that technology gives us a lot more for less. That's the promise of technology. That's the mm-hmm. promise of Gmail. Yeah. But there's always a take. And you really, what you, the value you get is measured by what you're giving or you're, you're, you're giving away. And, and I would say, at least when it comes to an ERP and commerce, you pay for what you get. There's no, I tell people, there are no coupon codes for Magento agencies for doing <laughs> it for less. In yeah. the Magento world, you pay for what you get. In the NetSuite world, when you pick NetSuite, you are paying for what you're getting. But I would say the value compared to some of the other systems that are out there is is extremely justifiable. Yeah, yeah, no, that is uh, uh, that is. Um, I, I did think it was it would be more expensive than that. So that's that's great. Um, Last question I had, I know we're about at our time here. And if there's any other topics you want to get to before we wrap up, um, feel free to, to chime in. But um, uh, you are talking a lot about sort of reporting and data analytics uh, within NetSuite. And it got me thinking about Magento BI, uh, the mm-hmm. business intelligence uh, tool, which is an acquisition uh, that they made. And I'm curious if you guys have used that at all and how you think that might um, uh, stack up to NetSuite when it comes to reporting. Matt, do you have any first thoughts? Uh, no, we have not. We have not used it yet. Correct. I know our our new uh, head of NetSuite has looked into Magento BI a little bit, um, but uh, yeah, don't don't really have solid details on that. It, pro- those products are going to be certainly are going to be valuable for the community. For merchants, there's going to be value to them. Um, I would, I would certainly say you're getting data around the commerce side of your business. That's what they're built for. Right. I wouldn't expect anything more. If that's the story that you need and that's the full picture that you need, then I think it's going to be a great, great solution. It's going to fill a lot of needs. If you're a CEO, it's only one part of what you need. If you're the CFO, it's only one part. CMO, it's probably all you need. Um, if you're the e-com director, it's probably all you need. Um, so I would take it as it is what it is, and it's right. going to be helpful for those those certain types of people. Yeah, got it, got it. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, you guys. This is this is fun. I definitely learned a lot. Very informative. And uh, what's the best way for people to find you guys online and get in touch? Yeah, I would say rocketweb.com. It, you know, it's it's where we live. Um, um, we are, I know we're on LinkedIn and we're on social media with Twitter. Um, I would, um, welcome either, even further questions. I mean, if there are businesses that are really looking for just fair data, you know, we're, we're help, we're really willing to help out. Um, you know, I, people, I would say tend to get caught off guard. You know, you, you know, this Caitlin, when, when someone from a technology company calls you, you know, if they're in sales. Mm-hmm is everything is promised and everything is going to work with everything. And it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes, you know, what we at least come across is the businesses, they want data. They want, <clears throat> they want information that is neutral. Mm-hmm. Um, and that type of neutral information, when it speaks to their needs they're like, yeah, you know what? Magento is the right thing because the neutral information I'm receiving is helpful. Guess what? Those are the best clients. Mm-hmm. They, they honestly came to the decision on their own. Same thing with NetSuite. Like, if you don't think NetSuite's going to work for your business, we're not trying to sell a platform to close a contract. We, we deeply, you know, our average clients stay with us for four to five years. It's not by nice. accident. Um, yeah. So we have a extremely, we don't even consider it a close rate for the Magento 2 sites that we build and we continue to maintain them. They're just, it's really high. And it's high for a reason. So um, giving people really great data that's going to be helpful, that adds more color to the picture so they could read the picture better, that's what we want to provide. So we're, we're totally open to getting on um, other helpful calls and helping other merchants and in even agencies. Because there's, there's agencies that are trying to put their toe in the water in this world. Um, it took us several years to figure it out. We made mistakes through the process. And so um, we're, we're more than willing to help out as well. Awesome. Beautiful. So, so rocketweb.com. You can call us at 855-MAGENTO. Oh, nice. Um, 
Very and nice. then uh, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm on Twitter as Matt Mac M A T T M A C, and Instagram is Matt B Mac M A T T B M A C. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. Really enjoyed that. Thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, definitely check out Rocket Web if you're looking at uh, Netsuite. I always pay a lot of attention when I you know see agencies. I'm always interested in. What, what do you specialize in? And a lot of agencies don't really have anything very uh, um, meaty that they s specialize in. And, I, and that was one thing that I really appreciate about you guys. So definitely check out Rocket Web. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin.